I assume that you've all read the handout. Yes. Yes. yes good. So, what kind of equipment do you need? Everything you see behind you. So, first thing to do is we're going to organise ourselves into groups of five. That means you can get with your friends, or not, if you've not got any. Uh, and then each group needs two of everything. Yes. Do that now, and we're going to move down to the beach. We're going to move down to the beach. It's going to take about 10, 15 minutes to walk all the way around there. Once you get down there, you're going to find that there's five transects with five shore heights. Okay? You need to distribute yourselves onto any one of those transects. Bear in mind that you are going to be sharing those transects with other groups, but you're not working with them. Okay? You work with the five people that you're sharing your kit with. One set of sieving per shore height. You all know that because you've already had the handout. Be advised, it's not in the handout, but be advised that when you sieve your hole, when you dig a sieving hole, that you aren't going to get any water at high shore. So once you get to high shore, you are going to have to walk back down towards the sea to sieve your hole, okay? When you finish, and this is very, very important, you've got to fill your holes back in with one sieve per shore height, distribute yourselves. At some point when you've finished, and it won't take you long, when you've finished, there will be levelling gear with the odd lights and stuff and e-levelers we're going to teach you do a little demonstration to show you how levelling works and you'll be using that data tomorrow to get a profile of the beach of all the different animals that we've got okay today is way too nice a day uh, to be out here on the shore i hope you can cope with it um, so today we're doing the shore sampling tomorrow we're doing the laboratory exercise the whole objective of this practical is to look at the patterns of distribution of fauna inside the sediment on a sandy shore. So questions we can ask are things like, is the abundance of invertebrates in the sediment higher at the lower station on the shore or higher station on the shore or somewhere in between? We can also ask, is biodiversity highest down at the bottom or in the middle or on the top? Does that depend on what taxonomic group we're in? Maybe, tech, maybe uh, crustaceans peak at a different point than uh, annelids, for instance. We could arguably have a hypothesis like that. So we're going to test that today. And what you're going to do is, you're going to sample a transect from the high shore, from the strand line, you can see the top flags up there, to the low shore, uh, which is down by where the water is pretty much now. And along that transect, you have five stations. Each of those stations, you're going to sample per group of four or five stations. You, for, for each uh, station, one quadrat you're going to dig out. It doesn't sound like much. Um, if you end up having a bit more time, you're very welcome to take a second bag, uh, a second sample. But do be uh, aware that you need to sort this when you come back, back to the laboratory. Yeah? And you might not be able to actually do that. It takes a fair bit of time if you have a lot of animals in there. There's absolutely no problem about taking two samples as long as you've got enough sample bag. Good. Okay, so we've got five transects here. Set up along the shore here. You pass the first one over there. In a minute, what I want you to do is I want you to distribute yourself about four groups, four to five groups per transect, so you don't stand on top of each other all in the same transect, right? We also have shore leveling today, so you might have noticed that uh, right here is a shore leveling piece of equipment, and over there as well is a shore leveling piece of equipment. It's the kind of thing that people who build roads or architects will use to get the profile of the landscape that they're in. I want you to go and spend about 15 minutes per group Try and testing out how you do that shore leveling. I don't want you to actually do the whole transect because that would take your group more than the whole uh, of this practical period today. So I just want you to experience it. I want you all to look down at binoculars, understand how you've got different types of observations you need to make, and start thinking about how you then, when you come back home, will translate those observations into a shore profile, some understanding of how the profile of the shore is. I have to tell you that the lowest station today, the lowest flag that you have, for the purpose of shore levelling, we are assuming that station is one meter above chart data. So they, it's not far off, it's going to be pretty much like that. I would have thought 90 centimeters to maybe a meter 10 is probably about the real. We're just going to assume it's one meter. 
And because you can observe the whole shore line as well as that point, you can then back calculate from that one meter above shore level exactly how high uh, the different stations, the different flags are on your transects uh, of the shoreline and make that put actual meters to your profile. One other thing that might come up as a problem tomorrow is if you don't work in pencil right now, you are going to struggle to find your bag tomorrow when you get into the lab because they will run up so they're going to get wet. So when you put your little labels on, what transect on the rest of it, make sure it's in pencil. Don't eat the oh, one crab. Crab. Don't. <laughs> <laughs>